Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Greiner.
Man, this is fun. <laughs> Sorry, I just get really excited when I play drums. You guys don't get excited when you play drums, do you? <laughs> Man. Thank you guys so much for being here. I don't deserve to be here. I, I've worked a long time for this, but um, I'm really honored to be here in your country. And uh, I might be three feet off the ground and on a bunch of cameras, but I'm no different than anyone else in this room that has something that they love doing. Um, I just happen to get really fortunate with it. And uh, so my goal is to use it to give glory to God and to, um, to make people smile, you know? That's, that's really at the heart of everything I do, because um, this is a gift that I've been given. And as far as I can see, gifts are a lot better when they're given away. And um, so I'm just really, really grateful for you guys being here. It's a full house. What in the world? It's incredible. So thank you. <laughs> I, and I just want to point out, there's a really cute little fella here in the, in the center aisle he might, be, he might be scrolling Facebook or something right now, but he, he is really, really cute. He is really, really cute. Awesome to have him here. Uh, I want to point out a few people in particular before we get started. I pointed out you guys first because obviously you're the reason uh, that I'm here, you know. Um, but I also want to um, talk about Zildjian symbols. Uh, you heard a little bit about them earlier. Um, it's no joke, you know. This is a great company. And this is a family company. And playing for them, as an artist, um, I feel like I'm a part of the family. I represent them. If you guys have endorsements or if you're looking for endorsements as an artist, um, or you're just wondering how it works, just know that when you assume an endorsement deal with a company, um, it's not a one-way deal. You're not just getting stuff. Um, it's really important to remember the fact that you're a part of the family and you're a representation of that company. And so be mindful of that. Treat it like it's yours. Don't abuse the relationship. Try to do everything you can to benefit the company that you're endorsing. Um, and that will go a long way. Um, so Zildjian Cymbals um, is what I've been playing since I started playing drums. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't afford Zildjian when I first started. Um, my grandfather actually told me when I was a young kid, buy the best and cry once. We were talking about this at dinner, and uh, it just made me think about it. You know, it's so true. If you want to buy a great symbol, you're going to cry about it because it's going to cost you money. But you won't have to cry again about the fact that it doesn't sound good or it wasn't a worthwhile deal, okay? So be mindful of that as you're looking for equipment. You get what you pay for. Um, I couldn't get an endorsement through Zildjian. Everything I did failed. I sent in three press kits, and... I just got ignored, and so <laughs> I took my drum set. I was playing in the chicken house. I grew up on a farm. So I played in this chicken house. I could play any time of day, which was such a luxury, because I didn't have to worry about neighbors. We didn't have any neighbors. We were on a farm. We just had fields, acres and acres and acres of fields. So really, the only thing that was going to hear me were the livestock, and the chickens don't care. <laughs> if they did, they didn't say much about it. So... I, um, I took my drum set down from the chicken house, and I pulled it down into the lower part of the shed. It's called the implement shed, where we keep all the equipment. And I, I got on top of a ladder, and I took a picture from above my kit, right? So if you can point to that camera angle, camera guy, that'd be awesome. That, right there. I did that, but it wasn't that easy. I had to figure out how to get everything in place, and um, I just took that nice shot. Isn't that such a nice view of everything? Um, and it had taken me hours to get everything symmetrically correct, right? I didn't have this shelf system yet. Crashes on top, effect symbols in the middle, uh, ride China, and hi-hats about on the same level. I was trying to figure this out. I finally got it, took a picture, sent it to a buddy, and I said, can you flash this out for me? So when you roll the mouse over a symbol, it shows you what it is, the size, the type, the model. Um, and that way, fans that are emailing me can look at it and just see instead of having email me and say, what kind of like China are you using or splash symbol? So 
Zildjian Symbols was saying no to me because we had only sold so many records. We were a tiny band at the time. But this thing went online. I knew there were people that somewhat cared about my symbols. And so I put a hit counter on the bottom and 30,000, you know, some people visited in about a month, about four weeks. 30,000. So I sent it to my representative at Zildjian and um, got a deal the next day. And so it, it was just a matter. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I say that to say be creative in how you promote yourself as an artist. Don't think that you have to just fit into the mold of what everyone else is doing, sending press kits, putting YouTube videos up. That stuff is really important, but try to be creative. Try to show the fact that you are going to be a good representation of the company. Um, so Zildjian Symbols, you know, gave me a deal that, yeah, the next day, sent me eight symbols to try out, and I've been playing them ever since. Um, I, play, I play eight custom crashes. I like how bright they are. Um, when I'm playing metal and rock, I need something that cuts. And I remember going into the studio for the first time, and I had, I had these really old Z Customs, Z Custom symbols. And the producer we were working with named Adam D from Kill Switch Engage said, said that is not going to work. They're covered in mold. I said, what's wrong with that? They were expensive. We should use them. He said, no, we're going to, a, to Guitar Center to buy new ones. I said, all right. So he paid for them, actually. I got to give him credit. He paid for these A Customs, and he AB'd them in the studio. And it was amazing the difference between just a really bright sounding great cymbal. And the Z Custom, which had no definition because of all the mold and the cover up, and it was probably cracked too. So just listen to how this cuts. I mean, it's like every hit you hear, you hear every single hit. That's what I want in a cymbal. That's my style. That's my sound. I love that. Um, so 18-inch and 19-inch, just so there's some diversity. Um, play a 10-inch Trash China. That's my favorite cymbal. I like him. 9-inch Oriental Splash. 14-inch uh, A Custom Master Sounds, which I absolutely love these hi-hats. Um, they're, they're just so tight. They have so much, you know, they're just really crisp. So when you're trying to do like open and close beats, like, um, let me demonstrate for you. Get a lot of air in there. Such a great sounding hi hat. I love that thing. Thank you. Ride. Um, I like this uh, K. It's a really heavy ride. It has a lot of definition. K ride. Um, it's a 20 inch. It's a little bit smaller. The reason I like smaller symbols in general is because I can get everything where I want it to be. I don't have to worry about the bulkiness of it. So if I'm playing a double bass pattern, I want to have more stick definition with my ride. I can do that really easily. I can play eighth notes on my hat, or I'm sorry, on my ride, 16th notes on my kick. I can bring my left hand over and complete the 16th note pattern. It sounds something like this. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> I love that sound. It's really cool. Um, so I need something with a lot of ping definition. That ride gives it to me. Um, I use a 17-inch China. Um, I like hitting, if you were to look at where I hit this thing, I hit it kind of on the curve on the outside, but right on that rim there, you get a really good sound. So listen to the difference um, like between the rim and the outside curve of the China. So listen to the rim first. Right? Now the outside. Listen to the difference. 
So I like to hit right in the middle there. You get a little bit of that brass sound and a little bit of the washi sound. Combine that with a snare. Has that, that loud uh, snap that I've always been looking for, the china. And uh, uh, it just does the job really well. Holds up really well, too. Um, the last thing are the bells. <laughs> um, you can't buy these bells anywhere because they don't exist. Uh, I went to Zildjian Factory and made these with um, Paul Francis, who's the brains in the Zildjian Factory. And I love them because they, they sound real. You know what I mean? A lot of bells, I feel like, sound manufactured. They, they, they sound sort of generic. And I wanted something that sounded um, not industrial, but... Uh, yeah, unique sounding. Um, if you guys have ever had, had an idea of what you wanted something to sound like, but you just couldn't find it, I had that sound in my head, so I went up there. And the reason I like these bells is because they work really well together. So I can write rhythms or rudiments on my snare drum, and I can, um, I can transfer that sticking to my bells. So let me show you. This is a, um, a double paradiddle that I wrote on my snare drum, and I'll move it to my bells so you can see the difference. So I use a nine inch bell over here and a six over here. Nine and change and six. Um, so a little bit about my cymbals. Um, so yeah, thank you Bob and Kim from Zildjian for bringing me here and being a part of all this. It's really been very special. Um, I wanna take a couple questions. So um, if we can work out a way to get a microphone out to the, to the audience, to you guys, I wanna take some questions if you guys have any. And I should mention, if you ask a question, you might get something in the form of a shirt, a, a, no, 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 a hat or a drumstick. You might get a symbol if you post a hashtag Zilday17, which you probably already know about. So take lots of pictures. First question. All right, up here in the front. Oh, oh, we got a question back here. I'm so sorry. Hi, so how are you? Hi, I'm. Very excited to be here. First Aww. of all, I just want to say welcome to Malaysia. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. Uh, I have two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, you have an amazing blast beat. So what are your advice to practice blast beat? Oh, thank okay, you very the much. That's the first question. Uh, the, f the second one is, you know, as a drummer, sometimes when we practice, we just don't know what to play next. Just you play around. And then after 15 minutes, you just don't know what to play next. What should I practice, practice next? So yeah. how to overcome this problem as yeah. a drummer during practice? It's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want sticks or a, a hat? Or both? Take both. He wants both. Good man. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, all right, I'll start with the first question. Uh, blast beats. I'm going to simplify this um, for you because it is really a simple concept. You want to be good at blast beats? Get your right hand tight with your feet, okay? If your right hand's your main hand, get your right hand tight with your feet. Don't worry about your left hand. Um, if you guys can picture a truck and a trailer, the truck is your right hand, the trailer is your left hand. If you get the truck going on the road in between the lines, you know, going the speed limit, the trailer's gonna fall along. So focus on the truck. Focus on what's actually driving the vehicle. Um, that's your right hand. Okay, so you want to sync up your right hand to your feet. The best way to do that is to not find any distractions on your kit. So I either close my hi-hats, I use the rim of my Tom One or my Ride. That way I'm not getting this wishy-washy. Now you really want to have definition on your right hand. So I'll close my hats. 
Uh, this is how I usually practice this. Right hand synced with your feet. You want to split your feet in half. Um, so we're going to be playing uh, eighth notes, right? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And you want that to be really, really tight. No flams. So one and two and three and four and. Then you want to be able to double your feet. You want to be able to get both of those really, really tight with your right hand to the point where you can play it in your sleep. Then you bring in your left hand, okay, once you have this synced up. Your left hand matches your right hand. That's the first kind of blast beat, okay? So left hand and right hand together. Start with your right hand and your feet. Like I said, it starts with your right hand, though. Get that right hand good. Bring in the left hand. Now double your feet. Wow, that's cool. So, you, so yeah, you really want to tighten up your right hand with your feet. Your left hand will follow. The second kind of blast beat is your left hand is in between your right hand hits. So it's basically a single stroke roll. Same thing, right hand and feet. Left hand is in between. And that's the trick to that one. Listen to it with the right hand on the hi-hat and then without it. See how it's perfectly in between those hits? That's why that sounds so much harder than it is, because you're playing 16th notes between your feet and your left hand, but nothing's actually playing 16th notes by itself, okay? So, uh, your right hand and feet. And double your feet. Half time, 16th. And you go through all four, so like this, together, and then alternating. Eighth notes on your feet, sixteenth notes on your feet. That's how I practice that at home. Just spend like five minutes getting that really tight. And when JB sends the song over, and there's a need for a blast beat, you rip into it. And everything sounds really uh, harder than it actually is to play, okay? The second question is, um, how do you practice um, and play for 15 minutes and actually progress and, and, and find what you're going to play, right? Um, I'm glad you asked that question. I use a, a three-step way of doing this. Creation, memorization, application. Creation, memorization, application. So this is the way I write to August Burns Red, but it's also what keeps me glued to my kit. So if I'm like, what do I play today? I, I don't know what's going to, like, I don't know what I'm going to find interest in, or I, I feel kind of bored or stale behind the kit. Just sit down and think of something, a beat in your head that you want to create. Or take a paradiddle. Take anything that's already out there and start to use it. That's the creation part. Then you memorize it. That's the memorization part. Let that thing settle so deep into who you are that you can play it backwards. You can play it on every different part of your drum set with no problem, right? Because typically when we play something, we play it on two or three different sound sources. And that's good. But you get used to the sound of those three sound sources or four sound sources. And what happens is when you switch the sound source, you lose the muscle memory because you're so used to associating that sticking with a certain sound. And you don't realize you do it until you actually start to move something around the kit. So in the creation process, when you're writing something, you should use two or three sound sources. Keep it simple. But when you move on to the memorization stage, you have to move it around the kit. 
because then you know that it's something built into your muscle memory and you can play a paradiddle and it'd be on three or four different instruments. The third step is the application. And this is the really fun part where you get to find your sound as a drummer. Um, in this day and age, it's probably never been more important to find your sound as a drummer. You go on YouTube, man, there, there, are, so, there are so many good drummers on YouTube that should be on this stage and, or instead of me. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible how many guys are out there. But you're looking at three minutes of their best work that they're putting up there, right? Don't compare yourself to that. Be inspired by it, but don't let it depress you to the point where you don't even want to pick up a pair of sticks, right? And, and I'm guilty of that. There are so many good guys out there. You say, there's no way I can ever be that good, so I'm not even going to try. Hold on a second. You need to find your sound, not Lou Collins' sound, not Aaron Spears' sound, right? I'm serious. And I say that from experience because there's this common at the core of who we are as human beings, it's, it, it's very common to look up instead of down. So in other words, who's better, right? You hardly ever compare yourself to people who aren't quite as good as you. You always look at people who are better. So take a moment to pull yourself out of that, you know, problematic mentality and say, I'm going to find my sound as a drummer, not try to, yeah, climb somebody else's mountain. I mean, they already did it. Um, now, that said, go on mikeslessons.com, go on Drumio, sign up on those accounts, go visit Ash Stone's website, buy his drumless tracks. They're awesome. Like, you will grow so much as a drummer. But your sound is your sound. It's not anybody else's. Creation, memorization, application. Applications where you find your sound as a drummer. You apply what you have written and memorized to the kit. So let me explain that part to you. And I think, I think, this will invigorate your drumming. I think it will invigorate your practice time because you'll walk away, you'll put your kit, yeah, you'll put your sticks down and you'll walk away, you'll grab some water and you'll look back and you'll say, I did that. No one else has done that. I did that. And I can, you know, put it on video. It doesn't have to look that good. It doesn't have to sound that good. It doesn't even have to be tight. Who cares, right? It's drumming. Like you're, you're I'm, at the end of the day, you're just hitting, you know, things. It doesn't have to always be perfect. You know, have fun. Don't forget about that. That's really important. Smile. Have a good time. But it's yours. And so you take a lot more pride in it because it's not something you can look at and compare to someone else's who's already done it. There is no comparing. It's your sound. It's your beat. It's your groove. So let me show you um, a decent example of that. All right? Creation, memorization, application. I'll go through the steps. So... I want to write something mostly linear. Um, linear is when there's one limit of time. So, okay, I'm starting to like that. created that beat. Okay, now I'm going to start to memorize it. I'm going to start to play it, close my eyes, think about what I'm going to eat for dinner, right?
That's so fun. Creation, memorization, application. Those are the steps. Everything I write with the band I play for really boils down to that. Um, if you want to find your sound, probably never been a more important time with all the social media and all the, you know, all the content out there. So focus on it. Shut the door to your practice space. No one's watching. No one's listening. No one's judging. No one cares. It's you and your kit. That's what makes you good as a drummer, right? It's not being on a stage. It's not being on camera. It's not having a bunch of followers. I know a lot of guys who no one's ever heard of who are playing for big artists, big artists. Why? Because they're, they're really, really well practiced. They put in time. And, um, and that's what counts in the end. Great question. Thank you. Another question. Uh, yeah, let's get right here in the front. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Oh, <laughs> I have the same problem with these mics. <laughs> uh, it's been an honor to have you here in Malaysia. Aww. I mean, like, uh, I've been watching heavy metal drummers for my life, like Taylor Hawkins, Dave Grohl, Aww. all those people. I think that you are the best drummer I've ever seen in oh, life. Wow. Uh, I have two questions for you, sir. Uh, number one, what Remo hits are you using? It's a good question. Thank and, you. And uh, number two, are your drumsticks like real from what we buy from stores, like your signature <laughs> series? <laughs> That is a really good question. Yeah. Wow. Man, I would be in deep water if it wasn't. The, if I was selling sticks that weren't actually the ones I was playing. Yeah, that's a, a very valid question, though. And I'll tell you what, at the end of this clinic, I'm going to give you a pair. <laughs> and you can be the judge. It's exactly the same stick. I play for Vic Firth. Um, and Vic Firth is the best drum stick company in the world, and uh, they're very, very careful about what kind of stick they, they manufacture. Um, perfect pitch, that's their motto. So they hold themselves to a pretty high standard. Um, I designed this stick over the course of eight months. It took a long time. Uh, they're a little bit longer than the sticks I was playing, which were three A's. I wanted a slower taper. Uh, I was breaking sticks up here a lot, um, just because of the taper being somewhat fast. So with a slower taper, you get a little bit uh, more meat on the end of the stick, which is really nice. Because where I hit the crash is usually up in this portion of the stick anyway. Uh, I hold the stick around the American flag. Uh, Vic Firth puts that there so you find the perfect balance. So your thumb goes right over that flag. And the way I'm set up, that hits this, you know, the crash right there over the the slow taper. Sticks a little longer. Uh, I'm not the tallest, most lankiest person in the world, so I wanted a little bit more uh, reach. My drumstick. So that's what I did. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. Um, man, I got so caught up in your, your nice compliment, I forget the first question. Uh, yeah, Remo. That was the question. Um, so I play clear Remo. Um, clear Ripmo Emperors on my toms. I was tuning. It took me about 45 minutes to tune for this clinic. I use what's called a tune bot. And I tune tom one uh, to a C and tom three to a C. So I have a C and a C. And then I have a G in the middle. I love these heads because if you're a drummer, you know a lot about how it feels to play a drum, which I agree, it's, it sounds... Uh, I don't know, artsy? I guess it, it seems like it's too artsy to even say that, but it's true. Uh, if you play a clear Remo Emperor you know, head on your toms, there's a certain feeling to it compared to another type of head. I really like the way these bite. I like the way my stick digs. I, I like that it's not, it's not plastic sounding. You know, it doesn't sound like there's a, lot, a whole lot of glue in there or anything. Um, I tune CGC for a reason. If I'm playing Tom 1 and Tom 3 together, I get that full octave. And if I'm playing a beat, um, I 
you get that sound. It's like just a really nice full range sound. Um, on my snare, I use an Emperor X coated. Um, they make a bunch of good snare heads. They're all pretty good. I like the Emperor X because I don't kill it as quickly. I like to hit pretty hard, I think, uh, so it holds up for a couple shows. Um, <laughs> nothing special on the bottom, just a resonant head. And on uh, kick drum, I switch a lot. I go between like the Remo Parasonic uh, Pro and the and the Power Pro. Um, they make a lot of good heads. Um, that's what I've been using for a couple years now. Signed to Remo back in 2013. So, what would you like as a gift? The drum set. <laughs> that's what um, I would want as the gift. I want your drumstick which you are holding right now. These. Yes. You got it, but I need them for, for a little bit yet. Yeah, after that, yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. You got it. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, man. That's so nice of you. <laughs> Another question? Wow, a lot of questions. That's awesome. Take your pick. Let's go one at the back. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's head to the back, yeah. I also want to thank um, the man in the back here. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's all pay our respects to, uh, to the owner of this entire venue and club. Let's all take a stand here and look in the back. Uh, we have uh, someone with us who's been great and been with us, and he's been in the music industry a long time. Let's all take a stand, get, and let's give a round of applause for Mr. Poix. Awesome. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Um, he's the reason this is all here, for our enjoyment, right? So we can learn and we can enjoy drumming together. So thank you very much for having me. Question? How do you move around the drum set quickly? How do I move around the drum set? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, so, first of all, my drum set is set up so it's ergonomically... So it's so it's ergonomical, right? And that word basically means it's it's for me it's it's just fluid, right? I can close my eyes. I used to close my eyes and practice, or I used to turn off the lights and practice, so I knew I had everything right. Um, this kid is so cute. Oh my word! So so there's a few ways I practice this. Um, I do single strokes, just four strokes on each drum, and then I'll put in I'll put in kicks in between those hits. Um, to complete my 16th note. So I'll do right, left, right, kick, right? So it'll be right, left, right, kick. What that kick drum does is it allows your hands to get to the next drum really quickly. Watch this. Right, left, right, kick. Look at that time I have. I remember when I first found that out, I was like, man, this is, incre like, this is an incredible tool. I don't just have to do single strip. I can go... Then you put your hi-hat in there on the quarter note. Then you move it down to just two strokes per hand. So instead of right, left, right kick, it's right, left kick. This is where you have to have a lot of independence. So don't think I got this in one day. Right, left kick as 16th notes for a slow. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and two E and a three and a four E and a. So your left foot is actually keeping your quarter note time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that is the independence.
That takes a long time to get. But that is a really cool way to move around the kit. Then you subtract one more stroke, and you have one hand, one foot. And this I learned from, from the greats, like Vinny Kaliuta, right? Uh, where I, I'd see him doing a video where he's going. I'm like, how in the world is he doing that? It's a single pedal. Like that, that is the coolest thing ever, right? That's so cool. One foot to, to make that sound just takes you right back to the 70s, right back to the 60s when there wasn't a double bass pedal. Um, so here's what you do. So in the same way you're using a quarter note on your, uh, your hat, you're going to do that. But now it's just one hand, one foot. So watch this. Still 16th notes. Right hand kick, left hand kick. One and one. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. And you have that same 16th note pattern. And you still are able to keep that quarter note time the whole time. So those are little tricks to get around the kit. You're, you're sort of giving yourself space with that kick drum, which is really helpful. And it's a good way to practice independence um, and different fills. So try to get the most out of your practice time. Good piece of advice I have for, um, for you guys who hopefully feel inspired leaving this clinic. Um, don't set an unrealistic amount of time to practice. Don't say, you know what? I'm going to practice for three hours every day. I went on a tour with Esley Dine back in 2010. And I was like, you know what? When I get home, I'm going to practice for three hours a day. Every day, I'm doing it. You know? And, uh, and then I got home. Day one, day two, day three, day four go by. Drum set's still in the cases. <laughs> I'm like, I should be like 21 hours into my practicing by now. <laughs> um, a week went by. I think it was like, it was like 10 days. And, and by that time, you know how you feel like, kind of ashamed, like, I can't sit back down on my kit. I'm afraid to see what I lost. That's how I felt. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to practice for 30 minutes. So I went down in the studio, set my kit up, 30 minutes, no problem. I got this. Looked at my computer. It was like two and a half hours. So here's my advice. Practice for 30 minutes. You'll end up practicing for three hours. Don't say you're going to practice for three hours. You won't practice at all. <laughs> okay, I want to play a couple more songs, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Um, we're going to do um, a signing out here in the back. Um, if you guys want to stick around, that's great. If you have work tomorrow and you feel like leaving, um, that's awesome, too. I applaud you. Thanks for sticking around so late. It's really been a special night. Um, feel very honored to be a part of it. So let me play a couple more songs for you, and uh, then we'll do a little signing here. So does that sound good to you, Bob?